Sam Bunn. Had you ever met a celebrity and found they were much kinder or ruder than you expected? When my cousin Adam was 13, he was absolutely obsessed with Bruce Springsteen in the way that only a teenage boy can be. Adam knew all of Bruce's albums and their contents by heart and taught himself guitar for the sole purpose of learning how to play his songs. Adam and his family live in Finland, so when Bruce had a concert in Turku it was a can't-miss opportunity. Adam had never seen Bruce play live before and was psyched beyond belief to finally get to catch his idol on the big stage. Adam and his dad traveled to Turku the night before the concert and checked into a hotel. Adam was predictably bouncing off the walls with excitement, so his dad suggested that they leave the room and find something to eat. Down the street from the hotel, Adam saw a pizza place that he thought looked good. It was a tiny, family-owned restaurant and had only four other people inside when Adam and his dad entered. Two of those people were an older couple on what appeared to be a date. The other two were Bruce Springsteen and one of his friends, sitting in the corner booth and sharing a pizza. Adam flushed tomato red and turned towards the table. He walked over to Bruce, fumbling with his words and exuding nervousness. Bruce looked up from his food, confused. He might have thought Adam was speaking another language. Something like him or Spring's Tina Mata Mandalike Hour music came out of his mouth. Bruce smiled and gently asked him to repeat himself. Adam finally got the words out, and Bruce laughed, clapped him on the back, and handed him a slice of pizza. They fell into conversation about Adam's other favorite artists. Bruce's friend looked on amusedly, as if this wasn't an uncommon occurrence. Adam's dad was standing at the back of the restaurant, ready to intervene if it looked like Adam was starting to bother Bruce. But he showed no signs of annoyance at the starstruck 13-year-old, even though he had probably picked this tiny pizza place for the sole reason of not being bothered while he ate. Bruce sat and talked to Adam like an old friend, even after the pizza was long gone. Adam, being Adam, had memorized a dream set list that he wanted Bruce to play and now sitting in a pizza joint with his idol, started to discuss it with him. Bruce smiled and nodded at every choice. But when Adam came to the last song on the list, Racing in the Street, Bruce frowned. In E major, he asked. I've never played that in E major before. I know, said Adam, who had listened to every recording of the song ever. But I think it would sound really, really cool. Bruce smiled and promised that he would try it out. Adam nervously asked for an autograph, realized he had neither pen nor paper, and started to apologize. No, no, said Bruce. He called the waitress over and signed his name on a scrap of paper for Adam. The night left Adam on cloud nine. He talked about nothing else for the next 24 hours. But the story doesn't end there. At the concert the next night in Turku, Adam and his dad had the time of their lives. They danced and sang their way through Bruce's entire set. As the concert was coming to a close, Bruce paused. This one's for Adam, said Bruce. He's 13 and this is his. The words echoed over the whole crowd as he picked up his guitar. In front of tens of thousands, 
Bruce played racing in the street in the key that Adam had wanted. As the family legend goes, Adam was so electrified that he couldn't eat, sleep, or talk about anything else for a week after the concert. Bruce Springsteen is unarguably one of the greatest musicians of our age. But his willingness to go out of his way to give my starstruck cousin the greatest moment of his life showed me that he might be an even greater man.